I'm Josie from Josie's Art Lab, and today we're going to explore line. Different ways to use we're it. Gonna use line. We're going to make a whole page of fun line drawings. Here is what you'll need. A pencil, something with an eraser. It could be a regular number two, whatever kind of pencil is fine, but you do need a bit of an eraser. Two Sharpies. One is the ultra fine, one is the regular fine. Pick a highlighter, one, you could use one, you could use two, but you want something. Uh, paper, and I'm using just a drawing sketch pad that just has regular drawing paper that is about eight and a half by 11 or nine by 12. Whatever you have though, I'm sure will be fine. The other thing you're gonna need is something to draw. I have a couple mugs. I'm keeping it simple because we're gonna draw the same thing several times, several different ways. So, um, pick one. Ah, oh, ooh. Ah. I'm picking one for a couple of reasons. By drawing the same thing, I'm really gonna be able to focus on the techniques and the different um, lines that I'm gonna be using. And also, the more I draw the same thing from real life, the more familiar I get with it, the more I see it, and I start to see it a little bit differently each time. Oh. Sometimes it's nice to just draw one thing from observation over and over again. Anyway, let's get started. Once you have gathered your supplies, we can go ahead and get started. We are gonna fill this page with a bunch of different examples of line. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is different things that line are used for. Line can be used to describe it, the edge of our subject. So for this, I'm just gonna do a line that describes the outer edge of my mug. Now, I'm gonna make it extra interesting by doing a continuous contour line. That's what that edge line is called. It's the contour of the object. By doing a continuous one, that means I'm going to challenge myself to do a continuous line, meaning I am not gonna pick my pen up from my paper. And I'm using my ultra fine Sharpie. So let's go. This is about exploring line. This is not about drawing a perfect drawing. Here we go. I'm not picking my pen up. Voila. There is my continuous contour line. It's wonky, but it's kind of interesting. All right, so this line describes the outer edge or the contour line. Now I'm gonna do another experiment and this and it's called a blind contour where I'm going to move the mug on the other side of my paper and this time I'm gonna challenge myself to only look at the mug and not look at my paper. Okay, it's tricky. Here we go but I do have a little bit of muscle memory, right? I'm kind of following the same tracks that I did before. And then there's a little bit of the base of my mug. Woo! That one looks kind of interesting, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, so that's one way to use our line is to do contour drawings, blind contour or continuous line contour. Another form of line is called a cross contour. And these are the lines that describe not the outer edge, but the contour of the volume of the mass. I'm gonna step aside from my mug for just a second and show you um, an example with a different shape. So I'm gonna take out my pencil and I'm gonna draw two triangles, just the top half of the triangle probably. So right now, a triangle is a two-dimensional shape. It is a shape that is tall and wide, but it is not thick. Now, with my, with my Sharpie, my ultra-fine Sharpie, I'm going to draw cross contour lines. 
So if I draw angled lines this way, it's describing a facet of a triangle. And if I do other lines this way, I'm turning my triangle into a pyramid. Voila! But if I take the same triangle shape and apply different cross contour lines, hmm, I will turn my, my triangle, wait for it, wait for it, into a cone. They started out the exact same sh shape, but my cross contour lines were different. And so they gave a completely different or volume to these um, shapes. So we can do a cross contour line with our mug. Let's see, I'm gonna do a small one. I think sometimes what makes for a nice page is having a variety of different you know, sizes of shapes. So up here, I think I'm gonna do a little and I'm gonna use my pencil because I'm gonna see what happens if I can just describe my mug with cross contour lines. And then I can erase my pencil. So if we have these cross contour lines coming around, around, oh, that one got a little wide, oh well. This isn't about being perfect. This is just about discovering how these different lines work. And then maybe this. And then on the inside, you know, maybe there's these kinds of lines. Now, once that ink has dried, we can erase the edge line and see if it still looks like a mug without the regular contour. Kind of, but wait, there's more. Line can be used to describe value and value we'll talk about more next week, but value talks about the lightness or darkness of the thing. But wait, you're using Sharpie. It's only dark. True, it is. What makes it appear lighter, however, is if we have more white space between the lines. So for example, let's go back to our pyramids. So here, there's the same amount of white space between each line. What if on one of these facets, we reduce the amount of white space and I'm just making more lines in between the lines. It's happening. It's happening. Now we definitely have a side that is darker and one side that is lighter, even though the Sharpie did not change colors or values. Let's see what happens to our mug up here if we do that. So some of these little edges here will be closer and over on this side where they kind of curve around the mug. And up here too, these, these cross contour lines on the side, I can see looking at my mug that as it goes around, it gets darker on these sides. And of course, it really depends on your lighting as well. And this maybe even is really dark. Maybe I just fill this in up here. Look at that. It does look like a mug. <laughs> Great. Oh, we can just use lines to create a shape um, or also known as an implied line. So these aren't really, these lines aren't really talking about the cross contour or the contour, but by making a bunch of lines, see how they create 
these vertical lines where they end creates a horizontal line. And then I suppose we can make some more to even out that edge. And then there's some little lines in there. Do you see what's starting to happen? It's starting to be our mug shape. I'm using short bursts of lines. That's the other thing that our lines can do. They can create um, a feeling. You can have a very nervous line that is maybe really tentative and kind of sketchy and a little bit wobbly. That definitely has a different feel than Let's see, what would be maybe a calm line or a confident line? Or what about an angry line? <laughs> that totally has a different feel. And I'm just overlapping my cups here. I'm not too worried about it. This has a very different energy than my other lines. You could get a little scribbly. What does that look like? This is all just about exploration. So another thing to play with is line weight. Line weight talks about the heaviness or the lightness of a line. So you could do that in a few different ways. The way we're gonna do it is with different tips of our Sharpie. Um, I could decide that the areas that are more in the shadow are gonna have a thicker line, whereas the areas that are a little bit closer to me or in the not shadow are, have, will have a thinner line. So I'm gonna look at my cup. And maybe I draw it first with just a thin line. Oh, it's going right off the edge of the page. That's okay. Okay. Happens. Now let's, let's see what happens when we thicken up some of these lines with our fine point Sharpie. So this part here, it provides a contrast too of sorts. These different lines contrast each other. And then maybe this one is a little bit darker. I can use this up here to kind of fill in cup shape. And that creates a very different kind of line. All right, so we have quite a page of different lines. Now what happens if we have fun with it? What if we embellish these lines and this page? We can make a whole composition out of it. Right now, it's just a bunch of doodles and sketches. What if we take our highlighter? What if we make a little border around it and see what happens if we kind of make this look fancy? I'm gonna turn my page. page. I, like I like to, to get, get a nice even, all in one fell swoop. swoop. Ooh, maybe that one will go through. Oh, those aren't gonna line up. Oh well, that give me more opportunity for decoration. Now we can even take this highlighter and come into some of these drawings. And what happens if we add little bits of color just to make this page a little interesting to look at? Ooh, this is kind of fun because a lot of these lines doubled up. So I could pick some of those lines to fill. And maybe this outer edge. I 
Another thing I could do to draw some attention to different parts of my page is I could take my favorite sketch and I could create a border around just that. I actually am drawn to this one and this one. So perhaps what I'll do is make another little sub border. And I'm just using my everyday um, highlighter. Might have to rifle through a desk somewhere, but I bet you could find one. looks nice, but I'm gonna bring some more green in here too. Another thing we could do just to make this page feel fun is we could make notes talking about what we, what we learned or what we thought was interesting about this. Or just make little embellishments. I'm going to bring some line work. This is a shape. What if I overlay it with a line of the same thing? Slightly offset. Voila, there we have our playful experiment with lines.